Hello YouTube. Today I'd like to talk about using people's likeness in games. Now, this is an interesting topic that's had uh, quite a bit of activity in the past weeks or so. Um, and there's been a number of sort of fairly famous cases internationally. Uh, to highlight some of those, for example, we had Lady Gaga suing Mind Candy, the makers of Moshi Monsters, for the inclusion of their character Lady Goo Goo. Lindsay Lohan has sued Rockstar for their inclusion of the character Lacey Jonas in Grand Theft Auto V. And most recently, Manuel Noriega, the uh, Panama, Panamanian ex-Panama dictator, has sued Activision for the inclusion of himself in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Now, what's the story? Why are these famous people getting upset and suing? And in fact, how are they suing these game companies? Well, it stands from something in the US known as publicity rights. And what this is, is that uh, as a human, you have a right to make sure and control how your identity is used for commercial purposes. And this is really important in the US context, because in other jurisdictions, the commercial requirement is not necessarily present. For example, in the United Kingdom, that while they don't have an explicit uh, publicity right, it, it's sort of arisen out of the privacy rights. And so for commercial application, it's not necessarily a requirement. So in South Africa, we have followed from the United Kingdom. We too don't have an explicit publicity right, but we've got some fairly interesting common law, and obviously this person's constitutional right to privacy is where our publicity right is being developed. We only really have one case uh, around this, and it's not related to video games directly, but it is instructive in how the law would likely be applied. Uh, and that case is Batsisan Kumala versus Cycle Labs. Uh, what the story here is is that Cycle Labs took a photograph of uh, Miss Kumala, who is a former Miss South Africa, and they took a photo of her shopping in one of their stores looking at uh, ladies' bikes. They use this picture then without her consent in an advertising campaign. Uh, obviously, Ms. Kamala was upset and she decided to sue. Uh, how she sued is that she used something called the Axio Inunarium, which is a form of delictual action that you can take in South African law. Now, for the non lawyers, that basically means it gives you a right to sue somebody to protect your dignity, reputation, or uh, physical integrity. Uh, what's interesting about this case though is that because the, the judge made fair, a number of comments uh, which led almost to our development of the publicity rights and it's worthwhile noting that. The first thing and most importantly is the judge said that the person's right to dignity and representation went beyond just making sure that those rights were besmeached. So what he was saying is that it doesn't need to be defam defamation. The use of someone's personality right doesn't need to be defamatory. That means as it could be, uh, you know, for example, in this case, they weren't uh, making Ms. Kamala look bad. They weren't making or doing anything that would make the public think less of her. So it's not, it doesn't have to be defamatory in order for you to be able to claim a personality right. Uh, what's also important is he raised two issues that he didn't quite deal with, uh, but does open up a very interesting application. He, for example, he sort of mentioned in passing that perhaps it was a passing off claim uh, in terms of competition law, or whether there was maybe a trademark infringement in terms of a common law trademark around her name. Uh, what's important to also realize around personality rights is that you can't uh, deal with fictitious characters, which is important. This is about if you are depicting an actual real life person. So, for example, the South African made Broforce, which takes off parodies and satires sort of 80s movie stars, is safe. Bruce Willis, uh, Sylvester Stallone wouldn't have an action against them for the inclusions of their characters, Rambo and Brohan, for example, because they're not trying to depict Bruce Willis or Sylvester Stallone. Instead, they're making a parody of uh, John Rambo and uh, McLean, I forget his name. Um, but, and that's a, there's a whole bunch of other separate legal issues that maybe we'll cover in another uh, video around there. But there was recently uh, an attempt to kickstart or, or crowdfund uh, a game based on Sapiro's work, Sapiro's cartoons, called Safari. 
and there we are having the inclusion of political, actual political players uh, done in the form of superior cartoon styles. So for example, there was Jacob Zuma, there was Julius Malema, there was Helen Ziller. And while the game never actually made publish, it would be possible for that game to have, uh, or rather for the people depicted in this game to sue under this rights, uh, under these pseudo publicity rights that we have in the country, which raises us to the very important question: Well, what defences do you have? Because uh, the only case for this is the actio in uh, you would have your normal intellectual defences, and most importantly, one of that is a, is what we call wrongfulness. And for a wrongfulness defence, it is very broad and it's obviously not very concrete. But basically, in the public opinion, in the in the South African context. Would it be wrongful or for somebody to do this? Um, and so the superior, for example, might get off because you could possibly raise a defense of satire or parody, which might say, well, yes, we know we're possibly infringing these people's reputation, we're, we're infringing on their dignity, but because it's satirical, because it's parody, it shouldn't be deemed wrongful. The bottom line, though, is if you are going to include someone's likeness in your game and you're doing it of an actual physical living person, it will always be better to get their permission first.